Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Hacking with Super Tokens. Today, we are going to continue with our Web Components project, hacking some stuff with React, trying it out in raw HTML, we'll see where that takes us. But the grand idea for today is actually enabling some slotting functionality, some custom children and stuff like that, using our previous Web Components project we started building upon. Let's dig in. So, as with the previous episodes, let's first have a look at the agenda and our goals for today. So, goal number one. We want to allow the usage of slots using the slot tag, or rather, it's not going to really be the slot tag for some very interesting technical reasons, but we'll get into that a bit later. The thing we want to do is like basically inject uh, HTML, even React children, inside our web component, all for the purpose of customizing how it looks like, maybe add some stuff to it, like whether visual, functional, whatever. Basically, we want to customize the markup that lives inside our web components, something that you might compare to React Children, for example. When you're using a pre-existing design system, like any of them pretty much, you have the ability of injecting children inside those custom elements or rather like components that you get from React. So we want to try and emulate a similar kind of functionality with what we're building over here. Now, the second thing that we want to do is basically support multiple slots. Now, if you're using the Shadow DOM, which we're not using for reasons I already explained in the previous episodes, like basically it's very unfriendly to password managers. So, and we're building an, authentic an authentication library for, or rather an auth authentication component library that's, that has the grand aim of being uh, universal. We want to support multiple slots for that reason. Like basically maybe inject something into the header, maybe add a field to the form, maybe change a button or stuff like that. And one of the methods to do that is basically like having multiple slots, allowing uh, users to inject content into those slots. And finally, once we build all of that, it's probably not going to be too hard, I hope. I already had a couple of experiments done. We'll try those that new slot functionality with our library in raw HTML and in our React demo. One important thing I forgot is this spoilery part over here. We won't support default slots, at, at least as they are defined when you're using the Shadow DOM. Now, it's not impossible to support them via hacks and DOM manipulation, but it becomes a bit hairy quickly. So I decided to go with named slots only. So, okay, first let's maybe do a refresher of where we were, where we stopped last time. So if we have a look at our project, the big idea here was that we have this dashboard, which reflects our state when we're logged in and it's, it's able to show us the session we currently have. We can sign out via it and basically takes us back to a login screen in which we can just sign into. So with my previously existing account, if I press sign up, it's probably going to error out and tell me that that email already exists. That's fine. That's expected. If we do a sign in thing instead, it's going to allow us to sign in. So what that what that translates to in, in code is the following. Let me just reset the zoom real quick. So this is what we have over here. Now we have these two components email password, which is the login screen and the sign up screen rolled into one, the thing you saw a minute ago. And we also added a custom navigate functionality to it. So let me just delete this commented out code, which we don't exactly need, but I'll leave the comments because they come in handy sometimes. What we see up here is a bunch of uh, utility functions that Super Tokens has in place for us to be able to build sign up and login functionality using its SDKs. So if you want to find out more about that, have a look at the previous episodes. Now the important stuff is here, down here. Now we have some functions for handling signups, for handling sign-ins, for handling the states where a session already exists and somebody navigated to this route. We are returning the markup using SolidJS as we explained in the previous episodes. And finally, we are exporting a register function which ties all of that SolidJS code to a web component or a custom element without using the Shadow DOM for reasons we already explained. The dashboard is, well, a similar beast. 
The idea is that it returns just the dashboard thing, which has two buttons, one for session info and another for uh, allowing the user to sign out and return to the main screen. Plus, we have a bunch of utility stuff over here, which we got into a pretty, uh, which we got into depth in the previous episodes. And, you know, we can have a look at that. Now, the big idea for today is the following. Now, let's see if we go over to our HTML file. Let's say that let me just delete all of this. It was part of my previous experimentation. And we have this, this like C dashboard thing, right? And yeah, this translates to this pretty much. Nothing fancy over here. But if we do, for example, something like this, let's say we want to put a header in there, right? And we want to put it somewhere as a title replace something, add something in our existing form. And if we do this, like this is a header, right? We do that. Once we reload, like it goes in a very weird place up there. And we certainly don't want it to do that. Now, one of the reasons this happens is that we're not using the shadow dom. So like when the dom encounters something or rather the light dom encounters something and there is a custom element, it just like throws it up there. If we go ahead and inspect this element, we'll see that sure it's there. Yeah, but it gets rendered here. Now we can probably handle it with CSS and stuff like that, but that's like a bit dirty, at least in my opinion. So what we can do instead is basically create some slots or rather some pre-existing spaces where this thing ends up being rendered. Now the way this works when we're using the shadow dome would go something like this. We can define a, let's say, slot element, give it a name of like, let's say, header. And this would be our placeholder. And if we give this thing over here an attribute of uh, slot with the value of header, this should actually end up, you know, as, as a part of this thing over here. However, it's not going to get rendered at all for two reasons. We're not really really using uh, the Shadow DOM, so this just gets hidden somewhere. So not going to get rendered at all. We have the slot over here, but there's nothing inside of it. Why? Because like, like we said, we're not using the Shadow DOM and it's just not going to have any support for it. Cool. So... All right, yeah, I had some CSS from before from my experimentation. So no, I lied, scratch that. Basically, this is what happens. Now, this remains up here. The tag that we did, the slot does literally nothing, even though it we can find it somewhere inside there. So slots don't work without the shadow, right? But we can kind of hack around that limitation. The way we can do that is instead of using slots, which obviously do nothing, we can replace them with divs. And let's say we do a div here that instead of using the name property, which, you know, TypeScript will complain about, we can just call it data-name or let's call it data-slot and call it a header. No changes yet, which is expected, but it doesn't matter. What we can do here is good old fashioned DOM hacking to basically replicate what the shadow DOM and slots do for us when we are using the shadow. So let's start by let's start by hiding this. It's a bit ugly. So let's do something like if we encounter we have a wrapper over here and our root element is called C dashboard. So what should we do here? Let's do this. Like, let's say, call uh, const children elements. Elements equals document dot query selector c dashboard. Not children. We don't care about that. But basically, everything that's at the first level of our c dashboard element. So, like, because we're registering this as c dashboard. And we can also select that as C dashboard once it gets to the DOM. And this will happen after all of this gets rendered to the DOM. So we know that the element will exist at that point. But let's do this a bit in a bit more clean manner. So let's define a constant of element name. It's going to be C dashboard so that we don't have to type it manually a bunch of times and we keep it under a single variable. So let's do this and let's do this over here. We're going to have to be a bit 
fancier here and select that element something like this element name yes and remove this guy over here so what we want to do as a first thing here is basically go over each of these so children elements for each Oh, sorry, yeah, here's my mistake. It wasn't query selector, but query selector all because we want to get all of the elements that live at the first level of our C dashboard thing over here. Where was it? Yes. So everything that's located at the first level, basically like we have a wrapper, we have a bunch of stuff over here. We want to select that, go over each of them, like let's do element and let's say like if uh, we have like cd root yeah like and our root class was called wrapper so basically everything that's not wrapper we need to hide it so let's try something like this so if element class list contains wrapper we want to do nothing and we'll just return, right? But for any other case, we just want to pick the element and add maybe a display none to... Ah, right, it's not being treated as a as an HTML element. Okay, we need to do a cast here, HTML element. And we don't want to remove it, but we want to style display now we want to hide it why because we don't want it to render on screen and once we reload lovely so okay now we still have this element over here but it's not visible so all right we have fixed the ugly part now if we do other stuff for example let's say we add a div with call it junk div or let's add something else like with a slot of footer that's also going to remain hidden, which is the whole point here. The only thing that we want visible is this wrapper over here, because that's a that should be the visible part of our custom element over here. So we have that figured out, but the next step is replacing the content we find over here, like wholesale, essentially together with the tag and putting it inside these things over here. So in order to achieve that, first we have to select, I guess, the slots. So let's say const slots equals uh, document, or rather not document, but we can, we can, we can, we can do the following basically. Like, let's say, do we want to select all of them or not? Probably not. And maybe we can refactor even this guy over here because we don't care about everything in the document. We just care for the children of this element. So here's what we can do. Const root element. Yes, perfect. And then children elements would be root element. Dot query selector all. And why does it complain again that... Yeah, it's... All right, let's be smart about this, I suppose, if not root element, and then we can continue. Yes, okay, that, that, this should be fine. And then slots, we can do the same root element dot query selector and everything under root element, which contains a data dash slot attribute. So let's just log that out and see whether we're doing the right thing over here. So this should, in theory, keep on working. It is now. One thing to notice here, we have this flash of unstyled content over here before the component gets created, hydrated, whatever we want to call it. And we'll fix that a bit later. Just by, you know, using some old fashioned CSS, but like we'll get to that a bit later. What we wanted to check was the console. We have a node list of a div, which should represent our slot over there. Let's see what we are selecting over there. We have wrapper, we have main, cd root, and we have this like, um, where was it? Yes, here's our slot. And if we go to console, we are probably selecting the same thing. Yes. Okay, 
so we know we're selecting this, the, the correct thing. Now, what we need to do is go over each of these slots. So let's slots dot for each. And for each of the slots, we want to find the the corresponding thing that we have put in the DOM and use uh, what we have in there and just put this inside this div over here. So basically what's gonna happen is h1 with the slot attribute of header gets put inside this thing over here. So right. Uh, let's say slot name. Sure, okay, and slot element. This this was helpful. All right, and slot element replaced with... Okay, this is interesting. I'm not sure whether this is going to work, but sure, let's find out. And it's not working. Okay, sure. So, why is it not working? We have a slot element. Ah, no, no. We want to do the, the, the other thing. Like, we want to replace what's in slot element and uh, we want to take what's inside slot element put it inside slot so that would be like slot dot replace children with slot element yeah that should be fine i think and why does it complain yeah it's a possible null let's say that if all right yes if slot element exists then we want to replace it not in any other case right because it might not exist we have a slot but we might not want to put something in that slot so that's why we need to check for it first so if we reload here that's still not going to work and why is it not going to work let's see we have a piece of footer yeah okay Ah, right, we hit it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, here's the deal. Like, we have it in the right place. It's here. But, it's, uh, oh, sorry, that's that wasn't it. Data slot here. Yeah, here it is, but it has a display none. Because we hit it. We don't want it to be visible when it initially renders before the replace happens. So what we want to do there is reverse this thing over here. Basically style display, we want to put it as block, let's say, and that would be for slot element, not for slot. Okay, let's see whether it works. Yes, amazing, now we have a custom thing over there. Now, we can just replicate this with pretty much everything there is. If we want to do a default slot, we can just do something like this. Uh, let's say we want to put the default slot, let's say here, whatever. The data slot equals default. And if we do something like this, let's say div, or you know what, let's put a button in there get fancy and give it a slot of uh, default because we said we w we're not going to do um, the default slot support that we can find in the regular shadow dom thing we're just going to do a hack over here we should see a button in there and even better it's styled uh, in the same fashion as the previous two buttons now if we do something like let's say on click and do something like JavaScript alert. And let's see, hello from the regular DOM. It's going to give us an alert. Ta-da. Okay, so now we have slots. It wasn't too hard. The only thing that we had to do was just some old fashioned DOM magic, basically select all of the children that are marked for slotting hide them because like otherwise they get rendered and we don't want that and then we go over each of those slots find them try to find an element that we may have defined inside uh, our html and replace that that's it nothing more to it which essentially is what slotting is right Find the thing, replace it with the thing at the proper place. So, 
we can probably make this a bit more universal, I think. And the way to do that is essentially what we have inside this create effect over here. Abstract this some kind of function. So let's say we, you know, like every project ultimately ends up having a util folder. So we're going to do that. Util. And let's say, let's call this guy something like slot replacer. Place, placer.ts. I don't think we need any JSX over there, so it's fine for it to be TS. And what we want to do there is like copy paste this thing wholesale. And let's say we want to call it export const slot replacer. Yes. I'm not sure whether this is the right signature, but we'll get to that later. And what we'd want to do here now, our constant thing here is the element name, right? So what we want to pass it is an element name, which it would be able to select to use to select what we needed to select inside the DOM. So it's element name, that's fine. We can just replace this over here. And I think we have a universal slot replacer. Let's like try it out, see whether it works. So we wanna comment all of this out and we want to do a slot replacer using our element name over here. Yes, ta-da, it works. We have a universal slot replacer, but the thing that we still have to do is do the same thing for our email password thing over here. Now, we can literally do the same thing over here. We don't have to do anything fancier. And that would be just do a create effect in this function over here. Create effect. and do a slot replacer using C email password, but we're not going to use C email password because we wanted to make it a constant that, what did we call it? It was element underscore name. So let's define that const element underscore name equals C email password. And re let's Place that in all the appropriate locations. Do an element name over here. Yep. And just like that, we have support for slots inside our email password. So let's say we want to also add a title here, whatever. Let's do a title. And it was called data slot header. Yes. Okay, let's, or rather, let's put it inside the form map. No, let's do something weird. Let's do it, let's put it over here and let's put the main down here, the, or rather the default slot. Now, the way we can test that is, let's go to, it wasn't this route, it was, where was it? It was this one. So we have a div ID of root, no? Probably wasn't that one. Mm, let's see. Now this is the one, yeah. So, okay, we want to remove this one. This is the one we're after. And let's say we want to put an H1 with a slot attribute of title or header. Header, was it? I think it was header. Uh, yes, it was header. And inside that, hello from the DOM. And let's see whether that renders. Yeah, we're already in the sign up, signed in route. We want to sign out of that. Okay, so it breaks. All right, yeah. Here's what happens. Um, inside CMail password, this thing over here is set as flex. And it's not set as a flex column. column. So what we could do there is basically put this guy in here. And then it's probably going to get rendered better. Yes, this is what we're after. Hello from the DOM. That's not really a descriptive title. We might want to say something like, uh, 
type in your user your email and password to continue and let's make it on h3 because like the text is kind of too big for when using h1 okay cool so now even improved it somewhat because up until this point it didn't really have a title but okay that's all great so how do we how do we te test this how can we like test this in production here's how like step zero we want to build it npm run build and just like we did before we can just pick our resulting scripts from this go to demos and let's do like both the HTML demo and the react demo at once and we'll test them individually <coughs> all right we don't really need the UMD one here we can just delete it doesn't matter okay oh and by the way we already have the authentication server running at 301 but if you wanna see more some more details about that like have a look at the previous episodes so okay let's move on now in order for us to try the demos we first want to do okay I kind of did the wrong folder here yeah this is what we're after we want to do demos and we want to first try out the HTML demo and for that we need an HTTP server running on port 3000 because that's what our authentication server expects and if we reload here we don't see anything why aren't we seeing anything let's see we have some kind of an error i'm not sure what's going on let's first have a look at our oh where did i start the thing it was inside yes html that should work at least in theory let's see we have demos we have html we have index we have cmail password in, in the dashboard route we have c dashboard that should be working fine okay let's see why isn't that working fine let's try to delete these things over here let's see what's going on we have cmail oh right 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 <laughs> okay you probably remember that last time <laughs> We didn't really, uh, we changed what we were doing. We called this guy over here custom element directly without uh, actually having to manually call the register function for it to work. But we changed it and I kind of forgot I didn't really try that out in the HTML demo last time for very weird reasons. But Okay, let's actually do that right now. So I suppose bonus goals, make the HTML demo work. Okay, uh, we have to first like, um, how did we export all of that? Let's have a look. We have, I mean, yeah, we are exporting these two things, but I'm not sure whether they will be registered directly. Hmm. Do these get attached to window on universal modules or not? Okay, let's let's find out, I guess. So let's see whether we have something like register. Probably not. Okay. So we'll have to rebuild the module. What we want to do here is first expose these two to the window, to the global scope. Like window dot register. Or you know what? Let's namespace them. Window dot st equals something like this, sure. And TypeScript will complain, that's fine. We'll fix that some other time. Yes, register email password and register dashboard. This is what we're after. Okay, let's let's actually see whether this thing builds at all. Um npm run build. Hmm, okay. So Vit was nice enough to allow the, to allow us to build that mess. So, right, let's copy these two demos, HTML, let's replace these two. And I think we don't need to replace the React one, but, you know, for the sake of consistency, let's do that too. We don't need the UMD one. Okay, so now, if we rerun this thing, the demo, I mean, let's go back to demos, back to H. 
HTML, yes, and do the HTTP server thing. We should still see nothing, but we should have that function available. Register. Okay, so it's not, is it? Hmm. So let's see what are we doing here. Window st. All oh, right, it's uh, namespaced under st. Dot. Yes, there we go. St. Dot. Register email password. Lovely. <clears throat> and now we have this login screen, but we are still missing this one small piece, namely the where was it? Register, register, register. Here we go. Namely the navigate function. We don't really have a navigate function yet here, but you know it's kind of trivial to build one because we can just fall back to window, to mutating window location. And we're gonna do exactly that here. <clears throat> so back to the demos. Let's first do the index. We wanna do a script here. And let's say uh, we want to how is it called? Document. What we want to do here is document. Dot add event listener on DOM content ready. I think it was spelled that way. I'm not sure. Let's see. DOM content ready. Let's look for that. Uh. Oh, was it DOM content loaded? All right, it says it's a standard. Sure, we're gonna trust it. Haven't done this in a while manually, so sure. Let's roll with that. So let's do a DOM content loaded. And in this screen, we need um, window.st.register email password. And we need to pass navigate to it, which was just a single argument. Yeah, not that one, we need this one. And let's do this. We can do path here, which is a string, then window location href equals path, which will in turn do a full reload. And I believe that's all we need in this file and in the dashboard file we need a similar thing of course but instead of registering email password we need to do the same for dashboard dashboard yes there we go now if we reload this guy we are actually seeing the screen so let's try logging in Sign in. Yes, lovely. It works. So we have a session info. We can sign out. Cool. But okay, so the bonus goal has been done, I suppose, but we didn't set out to do that. We set out to try out slots. And the way we can do that is do a, let's say, H3. Uh, please type in your email and password to continue okay and we want to slot that into header and this should in theory work fine yes okay so all right we have working slots in the light dom using our html demo cool so let's for the sake of completeness try that out inside our dashboard thing continue all right we have our dashboard and let's do a over here let's do a slot in the default thing like d uh, slot equals default and just I'm um, in the default slot okay okay lovely we have some content in the default slot as well. And let's do something fancier again. Like, let's say we do a button here. 
and the button has a click me text on it just to test out some JavaScript stuff. Oh cool, so inherited the style as well. Currently it does nothing, but we can make it do stuff. So let's say we, once we have this done, we are registering the thing and now we can just, let's say, um, document at query selector the button. Mm, mm, mm. Let's, okay, let's give it an ID so that we can select it, right? Give it an ID of button and add an add event listener. Click, sure, okay, yeah. Copilot is being helpful. All right, lovely. So now that we, now we know that even JavaScript can work, that's fine. But all right, let's do something fancier. Let's continue with our React demo here. So that was over here in React demo and let's switch all of our code over here over to React. Uh, yes, here we go. We already copied and pasted our latest changes and we can simply continue with hacking around with stuff. Okay, so over here we have this. Last time we managed to integrate React Router so that we don't resort to server-side navigation and we don't like do full page reloads when we log in. And instead we went with client-side navigations navigation because like it's it's a better user experience I suppose and what we want to do now is add some slots and maybe pass some react children to those slots so let's first start with actually let's run this thing first npm run dev and we should at 3000 see almost the same thing should the session should work because it's going to the same server it's using the same cookies so that should be fine now what we want to do here is first let's go with c dashboard and we want to close c dashboard of course and let's add a okay so it says let's see but we called it header and the other one was called default so let's see whether that okay that worked even the live reload thing worked cool okay but this isn't too interesting it's just some static content let's do a button which will give an on click event too and what we want to do is, okay, let's just log something to the console instead of doing alerts all the time. Let's say console log. Click from React. All right, we didn't give that button any text. So let's click me. Lovely, we have some clicks over here. The next thing that we can do here to make it more fancy is, let's say we do a use state. const count set count. Or you know, we can just import it instead of like use state. There we go. Can do something like this. It's complaining because it's not being used. And let's say we put the count in our slot over here. We put the count here and do something like current count. Okay, and change count. Okay, and in the on click function here, let's say we want to do set count count plus one. Okay, and all of that inside the web component. Let's see where this works. All right, that's cool. Like what happens here is that even though it's a child of the web component, like the thing we did over here in the code, it gets rendered here, it's still managed by React. So to React, this probably looks like a regular DOM node. It's in the light DOM, so doesn't matter. And where was it? Uh, slot header, we want the default slot, here it is. Like it just changes the contents of that thing. 
and that's it. We already passed that the dense width registration and all of that. It already exists as a regular element, so we don't need to do anything fancy further along. Like the rest of the stuff will still work fine. We can sign out. We can like log in. You know what? Let's give this a title because it's kind of annoying seeing it without a title now. You know, password and what we wanted to do was do an h3 with a slot of header and please type in your email and password to continue continue yes okay. and we have that right right okay perfect so if I log in I'm gonna go back to our new and improved react thing which allows us to view the session info which was a functionality that we defined in here inside sh not shell tsx it was in dashboard which comes from react from solid but gets registered as a web component and the rest of the stuff actually happens inside react this button over here cool right Thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe so that we know that we're doing the right thing. If you have any suggestions about stuff that you want to see with super tokens, web components, whatever really, we're cool with anything. We just want to hack stuff, try stuff out, everything's fine. See you again next time.